Welcome to another movie night. This is another fanboy film nerd galaxy class spoiler review this time of Creed. I'm going to start this video out a little differently. Obviously I'm in my car. It's Thanksgiving tomorrow so I don't know how much time I'm going to have to review but I wanted to get this review in while this movie was fresh in my mind because I've been waiting for this movie for a very long time. I'm actually in my car driving just got out of the theater and I have to say Creed 2 was one of the movies for 2018 that I was really really expecting uh, to enjoy I knew I would enjoy it no matter what the content was anytime you have a movie as good as the first one you know the second one even if it's not as good as the first one it actually is gonna add to the story and make the first one even better so I'm looking at it at the standpoint of the first film being extremely good in itself and whenever you add a sequel it adds weight because you get to see characters build upon what they had already built in the first film so even if the film is bad there's still some elements in there that's gonna make the first movie better I love the first Creed I'm gonna go ahead and give a review of this one real quick I'm gonna do a very quick review of the first Creed because I didn't review the first Creed and the uh, the first Creed movie was actually one of my favorite Rocky movies in this little uh, quote-unquote Rocky universe, right? The first movie, uh, Michael B. Jordan as Creed. I said at the very beginning, I told every single person I that I knew uh, that had any trepidation about Michael B. Jordan being uh, Adonis Creed, Apollo Creed's son, that he would knock it out of the park. Is he a great actor? No. He's a young actor. If and now, I fell in love with Michael B. Jordan in Chronicle. Uh, if you have not seen Chronicle, check out Chronicle. That is an amazing film. Michael B. Jordan actually is one of the good reasons uh, for that film being a good film. He's actually really good in that. Uh, and he's had other performances. Uh, now, his collaborations with Ryan Coogler, who directed B Black Panther, which is my favorite Marvel uh, cinematic uh, universe uh, movie is is Black Panther. I love Ryan Coogler. He's a great director. He's young. He's got a very bright future. I, I always I'm like he's like um he's like the uh, brown version of uh, <laughs> Christopher Nolan. He's just coming out of nowhere, but you can tell he's gonna have a very long career. What I loved and what I do love about Ryan Coogler is that he's brings a grit and a realness to his material no matter what he's directing uh, I have not seen Fruitville Station that is one movie that I, I need to I need to watch that's the only movie of Kuglis I have not watched he is such a good director and the first Creed had such a grit a, a, a believable uh, realness to it that you, it draws you in and if you are invested in the characters from Jump Street just because you watched all the other Rocky movies, uh, it, it adds even more to that grittiness and that weight. It felt, screenplay-wise, the first Creed felt like a film that was not a boxing film. It actually felt like a full-fledged, flushed-out drama. And if you took all the boxing out, it still would be a great movie. Just the drama alone, just the editing, the cinematography, just the screenplay itself. Creed was a great movie. One of the things I loved about Creed, obviously, is Sylvester Stallone returning as Rocky. We hadn't seen him since Rocky Balboa, which is a... The first time I watched it, I, I was like, I don't know if this is a really good film, but Rocky Balboa is actually a very good film in itself, and I actually consider it, for right now the beginning of this trilogy the original Rocky Balboa if you watch Rocky Balboa and then watch Creed and then watch Creed 2 it feels like it's own little trilogy even though Rocky Balboa came out I think a decade before um, uh, the first Creed but in the first Creed you get to see Adonis Creed he, he has he's a split image of his son of his son <laughs> of his father and he, you know he's he has a normal job came out of a uh, uh, out of uh, basically a relationship with his mother had an affair with Apollo while he was um, still married to his current wife 
who is the woman who takes care of uh, Adonis Creed in the first Creed movie. I like that little aspect of it. It's cool. I mean, there's some things about it in the first movie when it comes to Apollo Creed, who is my favorite Rocky Universe character. And we'll get to my second favorite uh, Rocky Universe character in, this, in a moment uh, when we review uh, Creed 2. But right now, I'm just I'm kind of just speaking on Creed 1 because I need to speak on it to be able to give a proper review for Creed 2 the way I'm going to do it in this Galaxy Class spoiler review. So, in the first film, one of the things I loved was that Adonis isn't the greatest fighter at the beginning of the movie. And he ends up uh, getting knocked out in a sparring session with a guy named Danny Wheeler, who was played by Andre Ward. And that was another thing I loved about the first movie was that you had all professional boxers that he went against. Each one of those bouts were against real-life professional world-class boxers and it showed it paid off you could tell that those guys can fight i'm sorry that this is going to be so dark but again i want to get this out <laughs> so if you can't see me i'm sorry listen to the sound of my voice sometimes i do reviews when you can't hear me at all most of the galaxy class spoils reviews are meant to be podcast styled anyway so you're not really you don't really need to see me if this is bothering you shut off the audio and just listen to it at least if you have a youtube or a premium or red so um what I loved about the first movie, like I said, was the, was the fighting. The the way that the matches were set up, especially the way Coogler shot them, they were all done in very long takes. And I believe his first fight, his first true professional fight, Adonis I'm talking about, it was all done in one take and it spent it two rounds. And it, it, it's not, uh, it's time lapse, meaning the rounds aren't really three minutes long. But it's still done in one take. You see live cuts in the first uh, film where you know someone gets cut live in the in the shot, and it looks completely real. Their use of CGI in the first film was subtle, but it had to have been there to pull off the shots. Those long shots when it comes to bruising and cuts and sweat and blood and tears, all that stuff, all those little added elements to make the match real. The fights felt very real. Uh, Tessa Thompson, who plays Adonis uh, Creed's love interest. I love Tessa Thompson. Every movie that she's in, I'm just loving her more and more. She's creeping up into my top five favorite actresses right now. I just watched her in Annihilation. She's so good. She's good in uh, Thor Ragnarok. She, she just nails every single role she gets. She just knocks it out of the park. She might be my favorite character in the first uh, uh, Creed. Sylvester Stallone is Rocky. In the first film, he is by far still on the show. He got nominated for Best Supporting Actor. And damn, is that guy good. Sylvester Stallone's acting chops are insane. And if you watch the first film, you know, he gets cancer. If you haven't seen the first film, obviously, if you're watching a Creed 2 spoiler review, you should definitely, obviously, watch the first one. So hopefully no spoilers there. But for Rocky to get cancer, and for his wife, Adrian, to have already died from cancer, and Rock basically refuses treatment it's all just good drama it's just very very good drama and and i just loved all that about the first film uh even even adonis losing uh the fight uh, at the end of the film it, you know it had shades of uh rocky not only one but rocky two and i like that I, it felt uh, the first creed i i felt like had uh all the elements of Rocky 1 and Rocky 2. Rocky 2 is my favorite Rocky movie of all time. By far. Uh, I just love that movie. And there's a lot of Rocky 1 and 2 in that one. So let's go ahead and get to Creed 2. Creed 2 felt like Rocky 3 and 4 combined into one film. You have Adonis literally losing the fight to Ivan Drago's son, Victor Drago. This is the return of the Dragos. <laughs> And my second favorite Rocky Universe character is Ivan Drago. Rocky IV is my second favorite Rocky movie, by far. I just love that film. And what I loved about Rocky IV the most was the fact that I had two of my favorite Rocky Universe characters fighting, and one of them dying, which is Apollo Creed. Apollo Creed, if you haven't seen Rocky IV, major spoiler here, he gets killed in the ring by Ivan Drago. And Rocky, in, which is a, essentially a revenge movie in the Rocky series, uh, Rocky uh, goes after him. But there's all elements in here where in Rocky 3, Clubber Lang knocks out Rocky 
and then he has to find himself to not to go back and fight him and eventually beat up Clubber Lane at the end of the movie. Adonis goes through the same thing. He fights Victor Drago and gets um, knocked out, ribs broken, kidneys uh, ruptured, uh, uh, orbital bone fracture. I mean, he gets jacked up by Victor. And um, I loved uh, all the screen time with the Dragos in this movie. I loved the best. When they were on screen, they were amazing. Dolph Lundgren returned as Ivan Drago was perfect. I ate it up. I absolutely loved Ivan Drago in this movie. He nailed it. You felt Rocky IV in this movie. Now, unfortunately, Victor Drago, who is a, another real fighter, bridging off of what happened in uh, the first film, where you have these real fighters reprising, uh, I shouldn't say reprising, uh, uh, playing roles where they're fighters and they're actually fighters in real life. Victor Drago is a fucking beast. This guy is huge. He is absolutely intimidating. And the, if I had any problems with this movie, I would say my biggest problem with this movie, with Creed 2, was the fact that Adonis Creed is not a heavyweight. And they tried to pull off that he was a heavyweight in this, in this one. He was a light heavyweight in the first film. It's not a heavyweight fighter. Um, this fight would never be sanctioned. Ever. Victor Drago clearly looks like he's 50 pounds heavier than Adonis in this movie. You feel every single punch, not because Victor's stronger, it's just because it's it's not a fair match. By any stretch, this is not Roy Jones going against um, uh, what's his name? When he did the heavyweight fight. I, I, not his name. His name is slipping my mind right now. But Roy Jones Jr. went up from light heavyweight to heavyweight. And he fought, uh, John Ruiz is his name. Beat him. Points. Roy Jones Jr. Get, goes back down to light heavyweight and is never the same. You cannot put on that much weight and go in the ring and fight a true heavyweight and then drop weight and think you're going to win. It ain't going to happen. Um, I'm into Creed, obviously. I'm a boxer myself. I uh, have boxed my entire life. I love boxing. It's my favorite sport. And that fight will never be sanctioned. <laughs> okay. But there are some good things in Creed 2. I don't think that, unfortunately, because I love the first one so much, Creed 2 just did not have the weight that the first one had. It feels rushed, even though it's over two hours long. You feel the two hours a little bit more than you did the first film. The first film, it feels like it has no time to it at all. You really don't want the film to end. This film, um, Creed 2 just didn't have a lot of weight to it. And I appreciated. Uh, everything that they were trying to do this Kugler did not direct this film and I appreciated the effort of this director but it just didn't have the drama it just didn't have you didn't care about the characters as much Rocky's role was relegated basically to his role in um, Rocky 5 where he's training someone having a disagreement and ended up training them again it, it, it was cool I, I liked the movie but at the same time it just didn't have that weight to it um it didn't have that grit to it. Didn't have that drama. The the boxing scenes, it went back even further back than Rocky Balboa, which Rocky Balboa is, um, is probably the most realistic fight in the Rocky universe was in the film Rocky Balboa. This movie, Rocky II, I think took a step back in the boxing element. Seemed um, didn't have that realistic feel to it. It didn't have that choreography that made it feel real. It just didn't... It felt very Hollywood. And um, like the, the, all the other Rocky films, it fit in the universe of Rocky. It just didn't feel coming off of Creed. It just didn't feel as real. And uh, that's unfortunate because it, it could have uh, been better in that department. Ivan uh, Drago's son, Victor... There's no personality there. He's a robot. He is essentially Ivan Drago in Rocky IV, where it's just like he doesn't talk much. Um, he has uh, a couple of scenes um, dealing with the mother. Now, they brought back Brigitte Nielsen, who played Ivan Drago's wife in the first film. Complete shock. The biggest shock of the movie is that she's in the movie. And not just once. She's in a couple of scenes, and the, the, 
the dynamic of seeing Ivan Drago in there and she with the backstory of she fucking leaves Ivan Drago and his son Victor because Ivan Drago lost the fight against Rocky Balboa in Rocky IV. Um, the weight of Ivan Drago in this movie, I think, is the biggest weight. If you're going to have uh, any uh, weight in it, I felt uh, that was the biggest one. I really do feel uh, the pain of Ivan Drago and the weight of him feeling, of uh, losing that fight against um, a Rocky and Rocky IV. You really feel it. And it, it's... I actually feel bad for him. Like I said, I, I personally do feel bad for him because Ivan Drago is one of my favorite characters and uh, I loved him in this movie um, he he says more in this movie obviously to Rocky uh, the scenes with him and Rocky are, are great just the eye contact they only have one speaking scene but that's all they needed and uh, the rest of it works pretty pretty well I, I really enjoyed this film uh, for what it is uh, as a continuation of the story I don't know if they're gonna make a three Based on this one, it would be nice to have Coogler maybe come back and, and direct a, a third one if they're going to have one. Um, not sure where they're going to go with it after this. I mean, where do you go with it? I mean, um, this would have been a nice story with the, with the Dragos. If you wanted to do a trilogy, I would have maybe ended it the trilogy with the Dragos. But you have a middle chapter. Who knows what they do with it? Um, I personally don't think they need to make anymore. I think Creed 1 and 2 wraps itself up pretty well. I, I mean, because the only thing you can do uh, is have uh, Adonis have a downfall like Rocky did in Rocky Five, and I don't really want to see that, to be honest, uh, or have him die like his father did. Or, or now, I or you could go the direction of um, maybe in Creed Three, Rocky finally dies, and have it end like that. Uh, I think that I think you would have to go more drama than fighting in Rocky uh, in Creed Three if you want to do it. Um, that's just me. Um, fighting wise I don't think you could there's no more challenges out there for him Victor Drago is about as big as it gets hey you avenged your father's death quote unquote by having uh, Victor Drago go down and um, it, it, unless you wanted to bring Victor back I and uh, do that uh, do another one where they um, have a trilogy because they did fight twice in the first film I, I would be for that um, but I think you would have, definitely have to keep the Dragos in there if you wanted to do a third one uh, or uh, maybe uh, do um, Clubber Lang from uh, uh, sorry about my hands all over the thing or maybe do a Clubber Lang uh, return some uh, tie off with uh, Mr. T's role in the third one if you want to do that or maybe just go in a completely new direction and not have anybody tied into it at all and just have Adonis have uh, his own original story because a lot of you know as we do know the first Creed is good because it actually is uh, seems like a remake of the first film so of uh, Rocky 1 and Rocky 2 like I said before but all in all I would say this is a good film um, it's not anywhere near as good as the first one in my humble opinion if you like the Rocky films and you like Creed you're going to like this one it's a good entry definitely need to go see it in the theater it's not a bad movie at all I give it two thumbs up I actually enjoyed it if I didn't hadn't seen the first one I would say this one it would, I would be raving about it like I did the first Creed uh, it's actually pretty good it's just a testament to uh, Ryan Coogler. He is an outstanding direct director, and Creed was only made because Ryan Coogler brought it into light out of his own mind and, and pestered Sylvester Stallone to do it, uh, do the role, and uh, and to be involved with it because these films do need Sylvester Stallone in them. He's he makes them great. Uh, I love the cast. Um, it's just just not on par with the first film. The first film is just a higher class film. And uh, the performances were better across the board. Um, even Felicia Rashad in the film, who plays uh, Donna Creed's mother, um, she was even better in the first one. It's just everything acting-wise was better in the first one. I thought the boxing was better in the first one. I thought the pacing and the editing, just the overall, it's not, Creed 2 is not in the same class of film as the first one. But I highly recommend you go check it out if you're a fan of the Rocky films in general. Uh, one of the themes in all the Rocky films is dealing with loss. Whether it's a fight, people, jobs, opportunities, lifestyle, money, brain damage, you know, health, you know, it's cancer, drinking problems. It's just all the emotions of human life are represented at some point in all these Rocky films. And just speaking on the fights alone... Uh, Rocky lost in the first Rocky movie. He lost in the third movie. He lost in Rocky Balboa. He loses a lot. 
he loses all his money. Uh, in Rocky Five, he gets brain damage. You know, and I love how they carried that over to Creed, where just right off the bat, uh, Adonis Creed is actually at a disadvantage when it comes to a loss because he has already lost his father. Uh, he's lost his mother who uh, died, and um, he's adopted by uh, Apollo Creed's wife, who brings him in and raises him as if she was, as if he was her own son. But that feeling of loss is is there. You know, uh, uh, Rocky himself in the first Creed, he's already lost uh, in Rocky Balboa. He, already, he has already lost Adrian, and then you find out in Creed, Polly is gone, his best friend. He's lost his son. His son has moved to um, Canada. He doesn't get to see his grandson. So Rocky's dealing with loss. And then on top of that, he in the first Creed, he gets cancer and basically is about to lose his life. He's already lost uh, one of his good friends in Apollo. He's lost Mickey, his uh, his mentor and his father figure in the, in the uh, original films. So you're, uh, that weight of loss is there. And in Creed, you know, Adonis, again, has lost his father. He's lost his mother. He has his his foster mother, his adopted mother, uh, his father's wife, who he uh, had an affair on, you know, to have Adonis to begin with, but to see him in the first film where uh, Rocky was close to dying, and I actually thought they might go there in the first film and actually have Rocky die in, in the original Creed from his cancer, but he beats it, and it's not even, hardly even referenced in this movie outside of a couple of scenes. Uh, which I, again, I I thought you know with this film, even though the overall story is enjoyable, it just had a different feel, and it, they just don't go in depth with anything. You know, they I was thinking they would bring up how Rocky has been dealing with the fact that he nearly came um, to that close to death from cancer, especially since his wife died of cancer. You know, I, I thought that they would mention that a little more, and they didn't, um, but. In this film, we're having uh, Adonis, excuse me, lose his first fight against uh, Ivan Drago, even though is in the fight is portrayed that Ivan Drago is disqualified because he actually hits Creed while he's on the canvas after a vicious body shot. He nails him with a horrible uppercut, and he's disqualified. But he essentially won that fight, even though Adonis Creed is able to uh, retain his belt. Uh, as heavyweight champion, who he won early in the fight against Danny Wheeler, against you know, again, um, who he lost in the sparring session. Uh, I love all the little tie-ins um, from the first film. You know, he lost to Danny Wheeler in a sparring session in the first film, and uh, for him to beat him and uh, become heavyweight champion, and then fight Ivan Drago, I, I thought all that worked well. Um, I like the PTSD elements of uh, Donna's Creed. I haven't lost to. Um, Victor Drago in this film, uh, and not only that, a heartbreaking thing in this film, which really did touch me, because my son was born four months early, and was in the NICU for four months. Uh, in the film, both these films, Tessa Thompson has uh, progressive hearing loss, and one of the biggest concerns with having a child, which she gets pregnant in this film, was is this child going to be born deaf? And the child is born deaf. That was difficult in itself, uh, you really felt for Adonis, it, it, and it hit right at a time where he has just lost his fight, it's just like, he, the world, everything seems to be crumbling around him, but just like in Rocky 3, where Apollo comes and grabs Rocky and says, hey look, you just need that hunger back, you lost that hunger, man, Rocky comes and grabs him and does basically the same thing, you know, um, you lost the hunger, let's get that eye of the tiger back feel to it, and that's ultimately what put him over the edge, now I ain't gonna say this, you really did felt in the in Rocky Three that if Rocky dug deep, he could beat Clubber Lang because Clubber Lang was not the fighter uh, Apollo Creed was. And if Rocky could go two fights with him, you felt yeah he could beat Clubber Lang. In this film, you really felt like at least I did. I don't give a damn how much you dug down. Someone the size of Victor Drago was never going to lose to somebody the size of Adonis Creed. It's just the size difference alone was just a little bit too much. The hunger from that Russian was just too much. And, um, yeah, I'm glad he won, but I was actually, I, I hate to say this, I actually was rooting that Victor would win because it would have seemed more realistic to me that he would have won in this fight because he's just, he's just too big. He's just a better fighter than 
than uh, Adonis Creed is. So that alone, I, I thought was a little strange. Uh, just that size difference. I, I don't know. I didn't quite buy that. It was just something that was kept bugging me about that because it just never would have been sanctioned. But it's a, it's a, it's a movie. And, uh, but I just, it's just, that's just a little nitpick of mine considering I am a, a fighter myself. That'll do it for this one. I'll see you guys on the next movie night. Take care.